Hi, my name is Kay McKean. I am the founder of a not-for-profit organization in Illinois called Scarce. We are an organization that cares about sustainability and food scrap composting is definitely an important part of sustainability. Today we are bringing you a PowerPoint of composting for residents, for communities, and for industry. Okay. Compost happens in nature every single day. Leaves fall from the trees, oxygen, moisture, microbes, bacteria help those leaves turn into vitamins for our soil. Nobody rakes up our forests and yet every spring most of those leaves have turned back into nutrients for the soil to be healthy again. George Washington is considered America's first composter. Being a surveyor, he was very precise in everything that he did at his plantation. His stercorary was 31 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 8 feet deep. He wrote in his diary of everything that was directed to be mixed in his stercorary, everything from his horse manure to eggshells from their breakfast table to the leaves and the stems and the plant residue from his fields. Sterk is Latin for stinky. At that time, they didn't know that you needed to add oxygen to help things decompose very, very fast. They didn't know the word compost. What they created in those, in those colonial times was muck, and that muck was directed to their farm fields. He knew he needed to feed the soil at Mount Vernon, and this was his way of returning nutrients, mass, and water. When the colonial archaeologists first discovered George Washington's compost pool, they really weren't sure what it was, but he made very good drawings of everything he built at Mount Vernon, and so they were able to excavate his compost pool. The stones are still there that were there in his time, and then they rebuilt the roof uh, over his compost pool. He knew that he didn't want to add too much rainwater to his muck and make it too wet. He wanted the liquids from his plant material, but he didn't want additional rainwater in his muck, which today we know is important as well, monitoring and controlling the amount of water in our compost. So what exactly is compost? Compost is uh, organic material from leaves, grass, plants, stems, twigs, uh, animal manure from in fields or in forests, everything that came from plants and animals um, rotting together, biodegrading together to provide nutrients back to our soil. It's vitamins, if you will, for our soil. So how does composting work? What goes on with composting? Microbes, worms, all kinds of different insects, snails, um, all these critters come together as well as the material itself as well as oxygen and moisture and then heat. Heat is created by these active microbes and bacteria. Heat is created by the material itself and this heat together does all of these organic materials to, to become one new product and that is compost. Composting is important for many, many reasons, and different people, different organizations have different concerns about why compost is important. So for some families, some municipalities, some businesses, composting saves money. It absolutely saves them money by returning nutrients, whether you return it to a compost bin at your own home, a compost bin at your office. Um, this is a way to save money. Composting. Uh, organic material, leaves, plants, food scraps, um, reduces the amount of material we send to a landfill, decreases the amount of liquids in a landfill, decreases the amount of methane gas coming out of a landfill that can damage our ozone layer. Other people believe that compost is important because we need to return the nutrients to our soil. Compost in our soil uh, helps us retain more moisture uh, especially important in times of drought, helps keep our watersheds the year cleaner, uh, and so all because we prevent erosion with compost. So there are many, many important reasons to compost. 
Across our country, agencies are studying municipal waste, uh, and what they're finding is not just food debris, food leftovers, eggshells, and apple cores, but many more materials that can be returned to our soil. So pizza boxes and clean wood, cottons, silks. There are many, many items that can be returned to our soil. So if you count the, the yard trimmings, the vegetable garden, stems and stalks and leaves, if you count our pumpkins after Halloween, our poinsettias after Christmas, there is a tremendous amount of organic material that could be returned to our soil, saving money as well as improving our soil quality. Composted scrap, agricultural material, when it's composted, that material when we add it to our soil, it actually holds more water. And it actually kind of binds with the soil particles to prevent erosion. So it keeps the water, it holds the water, it keeps the soil part together, and that helps us prevent soil erosion. So compost really brings it all together. That compost material, that additive to our soil, that amendment to our soil prevents runoff, prevents erosion. We need to use less fertilizer because the nutrients are being put back. Healthy soil resists pests, so we need fewer pests, pesticides. And we need less water because it holds that water. So it improves the soil quality, and it conserves those resources, and it helps us conserve those soil. Altogether, it is a very sustainable practice that we need to really increase across our country. It's interesting when you study George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and their plantations and their conservation habits that they used, uh, you understand that they knew that we had to take care of the earth. Uh, they never call it in their writings, in their in their um, diaries, they never call it dirt. They all know, they all knew that this is our earth. It is very valuable to have healthy earth and healthy, healthy soil. They knew way back then that feeding the earth was a very big responsibility and they took it very seriously. So putting our nutrients back is something that our country has been doing for a long time. We just now need it to become very commonplace for residents as well as businesses. National Geographic has a great addition several years ago about our soil and it's where our food begins and I think a lot of times people forget that we need healthy soil for our food to grow. The population of our planet is growing rapidly. We're over 7 billion people. It's anticipated we will be at 8 billion people within uh, 12 to 13 more years and so how are we going to feed more people? We need our soil to be healthy. We don't want chemicals running off of our farm fields into our rivers and streams. We don't want laborers exposed to those chemicals. So composting uh, and adding that amendment to our farm fields is important for our food quality as well as our water and soil quality. Residential composting is growing rapidly around the country and if we remember that compost happens whether it's in a pile or whether it's in a bin, I think it'll make people feel more comfortable as they attempt a new project in their own yards. These bins come in many different sizes and styles. Residents should check with their communities to see if there are rules about where to place their compost bins or how high a compost bin can be, those kinds of ideas. But you want residents should want to pick a bin that is comfortable for them in both the size, something that they can reach, um, so that they can feel successful in this very natural process. There are many questions about what can be composted successfully at home. If you remember that compost happens, I think that makes people, again, more comfortable. But the easy things and the safe things for people to compost, especially when they're getting started, eggshells and tea bags with no staples, there's quite a list, your apple cores, your banana peels, some people wonder if you should cut it up. Well, the more edges for bacteria and microbes to work on, faster compost can happen. One of the fastest things you can add to your compost bin outside is uh, coffee grounds. 
Coffee grounds are a great activator. You don't really need to buy an activator for your compost bin. But if you think about things that, comes from fr that come from fruits and vegetables, that's a good way to think about what can go into your compost bin. Bread crust is fine, and crackers are fine, and the hair out of your hairbrush, and the lint from your, from your dryer. Many of these items will compost very, very readily. Especially starting, you don't want to add too much dairy. You for sure do not want to add cooking oil, whether it's peanut oil or corn oil. You don't want to add any of those oils or greases. You do not want to add any um, of your dog or cat uh, do to your to your compost bin outside grills there are too many chemicals on the ashes from the grills or from charcoal so you don't want to add any of that meat um, is it compostable sure out in a forest but in your compost bin it could become smelly or attract other animals residents will be amazed as they get more confident in their food scrap composting at home to see how much they've reduced their garbage, reduced their waste stream. Uh, truly one-third of what we put at the curb could be composted and so their soil will be healthier, they'll save those nutrients, they'll save stickers for their garbage. It, it really will be amazing to them. I think it's important in Illinois particularly, we are one of 20 states that has a state recognized uh, soil and that soil is called drummer soil. It comes from Drummer County, Illinois it takes about 600 years to produce one inch of this exquisite soil full of microbes and full of nutrients and so it's that we are starting to recognize that we want to keep that our soil healthy and we want to put those nutrients back composting saves money we've talked about that it requires less water we know that but I think what we haven't talked about is that it increases um, success for your plants to do well we've planted plants along highways people in their perennial gardens people are replacing prairies know that when we when we add that composted material to our soil uh, our plants do better which saves money and creates less work i'd like to give you a couple tips of how residents can be more successful and feel more confident in their composting I would say that Americans are 30 to 40 years behind countries like Germany and Sweden with excellent composting programs in their backyards. Um, and with that, I find Americans kind of play with their compost too much. They stir it way too often. So a good rule of thumb is to stir your outdoor composting every once every 28 to 30 days. Uh, unless you have a big rainfall. If you have a big rainfall, three or four inches, then just like George Washington, you don't want to have too much rainwater in your compost or in your muck. So then you, after a big rainfall, you'd want to stir it up so you can add some oxygen to your compost bin so we don't have a stinky outcome. Secondly, we don't add enough carbon. We're very good at the apple cores and the banana peels, but we are not um, paying as much attention to the carbon. So the food cups are the wets and the greens, that's the nitrogen. And the carbons is the dry and the browns, and that's leaves and sawdust from untreated wood, brown paper grocery bags, some newspapers that are only using uh, vegetable-based inks, those would be good to add. And of course, the most important is, is the dry leaves. And then third, a lot of Americans want our compost to happen very quickly. And one of the ways you can do that is by adding coffee grounds. Indeed, some residents even will go to the coffee shops and request to be put on their list to pick up coffee grounds once a month, once a week, to add to their compost systems. Sometimes residents are thinking, you know, what do I put my food scraps in, whether you're taking it to a vermi composting system or an outdoor composting system. It is interesting how many stores now carry very nice compost bins. You can reuse buckets of course and that's great reusing but some people want something a little nicer on their kitchen counter, a little nicer under their kitchen sink so there are a variety of bins. There are some bins that have uh, charcoal filters that fit into the lid um, and then there are some bins that have charcoal filters that are kind of inside the lid that you can't see uh, from the outside of the bin. So really residents can check online and check at their local stores to find which kind of compost bin will make them feel more successful or make their family more at ease with this new process in their homes. Vermicomposting is a system of Composting in your home or in your business utilizing earthworms. 
There are 7,000 species of worms on our planet. 3,000 species of those are considered earthworms. Charles Darwin studied earthworms for 38 years. He said you could argue with him, but he thought they were the most important creatures on our planet. Scientists in India have decided that earthworms have been on the planet for 1.2 billion years. So they're pretty good at what they do. Red wigglers are a surface-dwelling worm, and these surface-dwelling worms are great decomposers. They break down leaves and organic materials from animal waste and plant debris and apples that fall to the ground. And they eat those, they break down the bacteria, and they spread that throughout our soil. Earthworms, red wigglers, can live in your home. They like at the same temperature we do, about 68 to 72 degrees. And when they live in your home, they are very fast composters. They never sleep. As long as the temperature is right and you bring them enough food, they will eat 24 hours a day. When we talk about recycling, we talk about completing the loop. And really, our farmers grow the vegetables, uh, we buy them at the store, we get the nutrients from the vegetables that we eat, and then we have the vegetable debris, the peels, the leaves, the stems, the things that we don't need. Then we can put those into a collection bin at our home, or we can put those in a curbside collection bin, and we can keep that cycle going and returning the greens, the wets, um, the nitrogens, along with the leaves, the dries, the browns, return those to make a fabulous amendment for our soil. Whether we're getting that composted material from our worms, which we call vermi castings, or whether we're doing it in backyard or commercial, the idea is to complete the loop, to keep those nutrients and the waters in the cycle so we can use them over and over again, just like nature does. We've been teaching composting for many, many years here at Scarce, and one of our fun activities to do with students is to just think about a jack-o'-lantern uh, pumpkin at Halloween time. So you have this big piece of organic material, you open it up when you put the face on the pumpkin, you can make the seeds into pumpkin seeds and eat those. Um, you have a decoration and then if you just put it outside where oxygen, sunlight, uh, bacteria, microbes, squirrels, whomever wants to partake in this um, if this pumpkin and watch it break down over a series of seasons and time. Kids in schools, kids at home can learn a lot from watching one large item and understand how long it takes to break down and to become new nutrients from our soil. You can imagine a pumpkin uh, going to the landfill and how long it will sit there without oxygen, without sunlight, without those um, active microbes and bacteria could sit there for decades and instead we're returning those very important nutrients to our soil as well as keeping the water. Shifting from residential and backyard composting to commercial composting, whether a business wants to compost on site or have their compostable materials hauled away, businesses, universities, restaurants, grocery stores, this is really sweeping across the state of Illinois at this time. With the increase in demand for commercial composting from businesses and universities, we are excited to see the expansion of compost facilities. Together with the demand and the increase in the facilities, we will also see a decrease in the amount of garbage produced in Illinois. These compost facilities with their uh, equipment, their shredding equipment, their grinders, we will be able to add meat scraps, chicken skins, chicken bones, shellfish, uh, pizza boxes will be able to be composted commercially. We're going to then also see an increase in the nutrient value of the composted material. When you're adding the proteins and the amino acids, we're going to have an increased value in the nutrients that are in that compost being produced. As there are many different businesses and many different restaurant types, there are many different ways to haul your compostables. Many different kinds of bins, many different kinds of trucks. Businesses, industry, universities, they need to work with their hauler to find the best collection system for them, the best kinds of bins that fit under their counters, 
the best kinds of bins to wheel it out to their dock. You need to work with your hauler to find the best collection system and to set up the best co collection system for your organization. For example, the Sustainability Department at North Central College, which is located in Naperville, Illinois, uh, was doing a lot of research to implement a food scrap composting collection system uh, for their dining hall. When they were doing their research, they knew that food scraps are very heavy because they're full of water. And so they were trying to figure out how are their staff going to be able to lift um, the collection bins and empty them into a dumpster when they're very, very heavy. So they did research and applied for a grant from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity and they purchased a tipper. It is a machine that lifts up their collection bins, tips it over, and empties it into their collection bin. The company they are using for their collection bin has a very high quality leak-proof collection container with a very heavy lid. Uh, I've tried to lift that lid. It is definitely a two-person kind of a lid. And that lid is very, very heavy and solid, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that no critters can get into the bin. Uh, no mice or raccoons can lift it up and get into that bin. And it's a solid lid. It's not like a two-part lid because we don't want rainwater to add to the collection bin or to add to the weight of that collection bin. Just as more businesses and restaurants uh, want commercially available uh, hauling for their compostables. Residents are looking for that opportunity as well, whether it's um, that they don't have time to compost, they don't have space to compost, condos and apartment condos, all those kinds of facilities where it would be harder to compost on site. Residents are looking for that opportunity to have curbside, commercially available compost collection systems in place. Eventually, this is a system that we would like to see across the country called the Fantastic Three. We would like to have this available so that people understand the color coding across the country and it would be the same. So the blue bins would be for the resources we know how to recycle. The newspapers, the plastic containers, the glass bottles and jars, the metal cans, the aluminum cans. All of those resources are recycled and turned into new products to sell. The green bins would be for the compostables. These would be to return the water, the nutrients and the mass back to our soil. So this would be everything from the pizza boxes to the chicken skin to the apple cores and banana peels as well as when we have our yard materials, grass and leaves, when we clean up our vegetable garden, the stems and the stalks, all of those items would be picked up in the green bins, shredded and turned into that great soil amendment. And then the third bins would be black bins headed for the landfill. These are, would be limited really to the resources that we haven't figured out yet how to recycle or the resources that are not compostable. Now that we've learned about composting, what's compostable, collection systems both for residents and for businesses, we've made this incredibly nutrient-rich material. What are we going to do with all of these composted materials and organic materials? One thing, of course, is obvious. We're going to utilize it in our farm fields and in our home gardens. Secondly, Illinois is recognized as the leading state in green buildings with green roofs, vegetated roofs. And we're seeing hospitals who are, uh, instead of just plants on their green roofs, they are actually using them for community farms and raising vegetables on their rooftops. We're seeing restaurants that have plants on their rooftops uh, where they grow the vegetables on top and bring it into their restaurants to serve. We even have a brewery with a rooftop farm growing. Community farms are growing across Illinois where more and more residents um, who cannot maybe don't have room at home to have a garden are renting space at park districts or city property churches who are growing food for needy folks. Uh, we're seeing more and more of these community gardens and of course they absolutely need this nutrient-rich material that can be provided through these compost collection systems. As the popularity of vineyards is growing across the state of Illinois, so is the demand for food scrap amended compost. These vineyard operators are learning from 
the operators of vineyards in California, and they are learning about how food scrap amended compost increases the yield and increases the quality of the grapes they are growing. Moving forward, we want to think about what kind of steps will ensure a quality collection program for your business or your college, even for your community. Number one is staff training and ongoing staff training. Color-coded bins really increases um, the opportunity for collecting the right items as well as decreases the contaminants. Signage, signage in different languages, signage that's color-coded with the bins, especially for uh, events, com large-scale community events, it's very important that everything is color-coordinated so you get the best collection result. Here in DuPage County, we have more than 100 schools who have outdoor composting systems where the lunchtime food scraps, apple cores and banana peels and orange rinds are collected by students and taken out to compost bins. That compost material as they make it is being added to their community gardens, their butterfly gardens, and their rain gardens. So students are learning the whole system of accurate collection, how the science of how that, that food scrap becomes this soil amendment called compost, and then utilizing it right on their own school grounds. In this slide, you can see the importance of the visual aspects of the posters, the color coordination of the signs with the bins, the red arrow directing the participant to the correct bin with the correct examples, stapled right to the posters. There are very few words on the posters. You don't have to worry about which language because the examples are right there for the participant to see. I think it's pretty neat um, as residents uh, visit different sites here in DuPage County, they are growing more and more aware of the importance of food scrap composting. Here's an example of signage at one of our forest preserves. So whether you're hiking at Blackwell, whether you're camping there, whether you're fishing there, you are understanding that this is a very natural process and that we all can be participants. Wouldn't it be great if we had all listened to George Washington 240 years ago when he stated that it was our responsibility to return everything from plants and animals back to our soil. But the momentum is growing here in Illinois. We're finally there. Now if we just keep in mind that every time we rescue a resource that can help our soil, we help protect our future. Hi, I want to thank Bailey Gorey, our intern from North Central College in Naperville, and Erin Kennedy, uh, staff educator, uh, for helping to create this PowerPoint on something that's very, very important to everybody at Scarce Food Scrap Composting.